Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Technotalks here. So in front of us today, we do have the iPhone 16 Pro. So this is something that I've been waiting for. Honestly, this was supposed to be delivered yesterday, but I kind of missed it. So they actually had to deliver it today, but now I do have it with me. So I went ahead and picked up the natural titanium. As you guys know, there are four colors. There is one new color that's gonna be desert titanium, which is like the new gold. They still have white titanium and black titanium. And then this right here is my 15 Pro in black titanium. But again, I did want to go for natural titanium as that is the one I wanted for the 15 Pro originally. But without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up. So this time around for the packaging, they did go ahead and flip it around. Now we can see the display of the phone. And then other than that, not really much else to it. This is an iPhone package. It's very nice and clean. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right. It's going to be the first tab. And then the second one. And now we can take a look at our phone. So raising this up, putting that to the side. Here is a look at our natural titanium iPhone 16 Pro. So honestly, this really looks basically the same except that this year they did go ahead and make the phones or at least the display vertically 0.2 inches larger on both the pro max and the pro and they also did add the 5x telephoto zoom on the 16 pro so that was originally only for the pro max which had the 5x and the pro had the 3x but now the pro also has the 5x again putting this to the side inside it's even more minimal now no apple stickers no nothing we only get a USB-C to C charging cable. Once again, this is gonna be braided just like last year. And then we do get this pamphlet in here, which has nothing. And since I am in the US, we don't get a SIM ejection tool either because this device does not have a SIM card. All right, talking a little more about the phone. So this year, the 16 Pro has stayed the same price. It is $999 and the Pro Max is gonna go for $1199. But again, this only starts with 128 gigabytes of storage, which is kind of annoying. So I did actually pay a little more to get the 256 as that is what I have on my 15 Pro and 128 just wouldn't be enough for me. Also, they haven't increased the RAM on these. We do get eight gigabytes of RAM on the 16 pro and we also do get 8 gigabytes of ram on the 16 series so i'm guessing this is mainly because of all the apple intelligence stuff and that is also something i do want to talk about in this video but before that let's go ahead and actually peel the sticker so in three two one voila so that is going to be the sticker off of the display and now we can take a look at this beautiful screen which has not been scratched up yet unlike my 15 Pro, which I have scratched up terribly. So as I said, the 16 Pro is gonna be 0.2 inches bigger vertically. So it should be bigger from the side. So if I do put it like this, we can probably see that it is just a tad bit thicker. And if I do put it right next to it, it is once again, just a tad bit taller. I was actually gonna go for the Pro Max this year round, but again, because they actually made it larger, they did make it 6.3 inches. I wanted to actually try that out and see how that was gonna feel. In the hand, it does feel really nice. The 15 Pro felt really nice as well. I do like the smaller phone. My hand isn't the largest, so honestly, the Pro does feel a lot better. And when I do use my S24 Ultra, for example, which is a 6.8 inch display, that does feel very large in the hand. But since Apple does allow you to use and get all the features, on a smaller device, I do prefer the Pro. Taking a closer look at the body, we do have our three cameras. Again, this is gonna be a titanium build, which is really nice. We do get their new ceramic shield, which is apparently two times stronger than all the other competitors. But again, as you guys know, Apple usually just likes to use that word. They say competitors, they never actually state anything, but that is what they did with this as well. We also do get a larger battery. It's a little bigger than the 15 Pro. We don't get numbers apple hasn't released numbers for that but apparently it is better than before because of that larger battery and another new thing is going to be the camera control button so i actually do want to check this out uh it's an extra button that apple has added which you might not expect from apple adding a new button but again they did add that we still do have our action button which is there and so I do wanna really try out this camera control and see how it actually functions. But other than that, they haven't really changed much else on this exterior. Honestly, it just looks like a really nice phone and I really do appreciate the simplicity and the clean look of this. But if you do wanna protect your brand new iPhone 16 Pro, here's a solution from today's sponsor, ESR. With their brand new Stat Stand series for the 16 Pro, you are able to use your camera lens as a stand. What's really nice about this is it's perfectly hidden from any extrusions, 
you don't have an extra stand on your phone and you still do get to use your MagSafe perfectly without any issues. Also, they do have multiple models. So if you don't really like this hybrid one, which is a clear case, you can also go for their more protective case or you can also go for this soft case, which is made of silicon and it does feel very nice and premium. And once again, all these cases do have their stand functionality, which is super nice in my opinion. And don't worry, they haven't forgotten about the camera button. They do have a perfect cutout for that camera button. So when you do wanna take a quick photo, you're still gonna be able to access it while protecting your brand new iPhone 16 Pro. Up front, these cases do provide a very nice lip that goes around the display. So when you do drop it on its face, that should be perfectly fine. But for the extra protection, they have something for that as well. Opening it back up and pulling away the plastic film, we now have a perfectly installed screen protector for our iPhone 16 Pro. Now with their case and screen protector, you won't have to worry about dropping or scratching up your brand new iPhone 16 Pro. And so if you do wanna check these products out, there will be a link in the description. Now that we've checked out the exterior of our device, let's actually go ahead and set this device up. All I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and continue on the pop-up on my 15 Pro and everything should actually set itself up. All right, using my 15 Pro to go ahead and scan this. That's all we have to do and it should do it all by itself. All right, so going through the setup process was pretty easy. I really didn't do anything. I just connected it to my 15 Pro and I just had to accrete to a couple of things. But now we do have this camera control process on our setup because of the new camera control button. So let's go ahead and click continue. Again, that is gonna be our camera control button. Click camera control to open camera app, then click again to use camera control as shutter. All right, so here is our iPhone 16 Pro. It's finally set up, and it's actually been a day since that last clip right there where I was actually going through the camera button. However, that is because I did really wanna use this and see what's really changed so I can actually talk about it a little. So first of all, I did notice that the 6.3 inch is honestly the perfect size. For me, the 6.3 inch display, the 0.2, inches has mattered a lot. It feels a lot better in the hand. Uh, it's because it's a tad bit wider, a tad bit taller. The screen is just a tad bit larger, but again, just because of that and the smaller bezels, the screen just looks perfect. It looks the correct size for me. And honestly, I don't really think I do really want a Pro Max anymore just because of those 0.2 inches. So honestly, that has been great. Outside this morning, I was out a little bit. The screen is perfectly bright. I'm able to see everything. It was a sunny morning, no issues there. Cameras, cameras are really good. So especially the ultra wide, we now have 42 megapixels for the ultra wide camera. So it's very high quality. It's basically the same as your wide angle camera, which is also 42 megapixels. And then we do have our 12 megapixel telephoto camera. As for the video recording, I didn't really get to check it out yet. I did mainly take some photos, but let's go ahead and actually quickly hop into our camera app. So all we have to do is press that button and now our camera app has launched. And then once you do launch the app, you can either click to take a photo. You can also hold down and zoom. So you're able to use the camera control. I'm not pushing down. I'm just placing my finger on there. It feels my finger, I guess. And then you're able to do it. And then I believe a double tap. You can switch between your exposure, depth, styles, tone, once again, your cameras, your zoom. Let's go ahead and go into our exposure. And now we can change our exposure settings. So it's a neat trick. Uh, I don't know if it's really gonna change much for a lot of people. I do think most people won't really care that much. Maybe the zoom, that might be something, let's say you're holding it sideways like this, using it in the horizontal landscape mode. But again, I don't really think it's too big of an advantage. However, photos do look really nice. I'm pretty sure someone will find something to do with that. Moving on to the video, we do now get 4K 120 hertz of recording, which is really nice. You're able to take 4K high quality videos at 120 frames per second, and then you can go back and actually slow down and change the frame rate on those videos, which is super nice. That is something that Samsung actually does as well with their S24 Ultra. However, this is a little better than that, which is nice to see. Other than that, one other thing I did notice about the 16 Pro compared to my 15 Pro is I haven't had any heating up issues. With my 15 Pro, it started immediately from the first day, but with this, even through the setup process, even this morning with the bright sun while I was taking some photos, I didn't really have any issues. So honestly, I do think Apple really has figured it out with the thermals on this device this year. That was one of the biggest things I hated about the 15 Pro, and so being able to fix that on here has honestly just been great. Again, other than that, not really much else has changed. So they're very minor upgrades. I feel like they just refined the phone this year, just had a bit more. I feel like this is just like the 
15 Pro S that we would get before, like the 6, 6S. So I feel like this is like an S series. It's like a half year upgrade to the phone, maybe, you know, refining it a little. I feel like that's more of what this is, especially because of all the intelligence stuff they're pushing out, the AI stuff they're pushing out. Even though we don't get that right now, we still do have iOS 18 and not 18.1, which actually brings the Apple intelligence. So that's kind of been a bummer. Google did this as well this year with their Pixel 9 Pro or their 9 series. They actually don't have Android 15 on there. They still have Android 14. Before, most of you probably know, whenever the phone released, we would get the new update. But now, with this generation of phones, that hasn't been the case. I hope Samsung doesn't do this, but again, I do feel like in the end, they're gonna start doing this, pushing out the AI features a little more. They're not bad, but again, I don't think that should be the main focus point for these devices. I feel like they need to refine a couple more things, maybe get some better cameras, better display, and I don't know, better battery life. You can always change these things, always make these better. And so pushing the intelligent stuff more other than the hardware, I don't really think that's the way to go. But again, we can't really tell these companies what to do. So that is kind of their agenda right now. AI has been the agenda for the past year now, and I think they're gonna stay on that track, but I hope they don't only push that. But again, that is basically gonna wrap it up for the iPhone 16 Pro. Honestly, this has been a great device for the one day that I've actually been using it. I have really enjoyed using this. And again, I do think the size, the battery, the cameras are just perfect. And it's again, a more refined iPhone 15 Pro. But if you do have a 15 Pro or even a 14 Pro, I wouldn't really recommend switching to this. So as always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe and see y'all in the next one.